Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. If you look on how the police handle peaceful demonstrators today, you will agree with me that nothing has changed. Even though Kuhomi has been sacked, we have a new acting inspector general of police, there is no change. The police are still rogue. And that begs the question, who is in charge of our police service? Who is this giving rogue instructions to the police? We thought that by Kuhome being sacked, then there was going to be some civility in the police service. In fact, the police today showed that they are clearly not professional. They stormed a church in Akuru, beating those who were in the church. And not only that, they also threw tear gas at a school where school children were inside. So maybe Kome was not the problem. The problem is still in Kenya Kwanzaa government. Let's have a look at what happened in Nakuru. <laughs> So the police stormed that church and you are seeing they have ordered everybody to lie down. I just don't understand which type of police officers these are. You can't storm a church desecrating the pulpit. We saw the pulpit being desecrated in 2022 when Ruto and his team were campaigning. In fact, it's because of Ruto and his team, the church is dead in Kenya. And now as the president, we are seeing police officers storming a church, desecrating the pulpit. Which type of police officers are these? Who is giving them those orders? Mr. President, Something is seriously wrong. It never stopped there. Tear gas was also thrown at a school. Mr. President, this is not right. It never stopped there. They even stormed a hospital. Something is not adding up. There is a serious problem. I want us to dig deep into all this for Kenyans to understand. 
what's happening here. If you are watching us but you are not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's proceed. Ruto's government has become more dictatorial, more barbaric. That's why now places of worship, hospitals, schools are not being respected. In fact, it's as if we are in Gaza. Yes, this government has become more dictatorial. I've seen some GNZ saying they will demonstrate, they will protest until that day William Ruto will quit. And I'm not taking those words lightly. This government has pushed Kenyans to the wall. For two years, Kenyans were just silent, talking, but William Ruto was not listening. And William Ruto even became more deaf. For two years, Kenyans have really suffered. Kenyans have suffered for two years. So when they say they will protest till William Ruto quits, I'm not taking those remarks lightly. And just as I've been saying in this forum, revolutions do take time. It's a never a one day thing where you take to the street saying Ruto must go and then he goes, no. He will try to resist that. So that's why I'm saying revolutions take time. In Sri Lanka, it was a nine month duration of pressure until the president had to run away. I'm very sure that if this protest continue, if Gen Z's continue piling pressure on Ruto, William Ruto will run away. No doubt about that. What we saw today across the country, even in the college in Rift Valley, the whole country is against Ruto. What Ruto's advisors ought to be telling him now is for him to listen to the ground. Ruto's entire government is rotten. Let him, let him dissolve it. Let him dissolve the entire government. It's rotten. And we have just seen that maybe the inspector was not the problem. Maybe the cabinet was not the problem. The problem is Ruto. That's why in spite of the fact that he has sacked his entire cabinet, he has sacked the IG, he has sacked Attorney General, things are not changing. In fact, Ruto speaking yesterday, he was speaking as if things are back to normal. The kind of arrogance they have used to rule Kenya in the last two years. So the problem is Ruto. Mr. President, you must change your ways. Times have changed. Power belongs to the people. You have no option but to listen to the people. The people are not happy on how you talk, on how you give false promises. The people are not happy. You keep on passing blame. Yesterday, you were accusing the Ford Foundation of sponsoring these protests. Before that, you were accusing Uhuru Kenyatta regarding a shagwa. You keep on shifting goalposts. So in other words, you are not honest with Kenyans. You are lying. Those are the things angering Kenyans. So you must change. Your character is betraying you, Mr. President. From what happened, ladies and gentlemen, I still see a very high possibility where eventually, if all you just project it in the coming months, eventually, all this might end with William Ruto being summoned to Hague. And as he shows a lot of police brutality, Kenyans are also getting hardened. 
and more Kenyans might also join in these protests. We might see other generations, the millennials, Gen X, also joining in these protests. William Ruto will not survive. This is why I still implore the president to listen to the people. The people are speaking very clearly. They don't like everything about your government. They don't like the lies. They don't like how you talk. That kind of chest thumping. They don't like all that. They don't like Rigadi. How Rigadi talks. Be humble knowing fully well power belongs to the people. You can't rule people by force. Let me stop it there. If you are watching us but you are not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Those watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.